Thank you for coming in. Hey, oh. Why, hello there. It's um, 2 o'clock. Okay. It's 2 o'clock, guys. Welcome to IG Live and your regular scheduled programming. Because we've been doing so many things off the cuff, too. That's true. So, um, all right. So, today is going to be good. And we actually have brought you guys back into um, another area of the office to do today because the big problem of the week has been that you guys have been buying a lot of stuff that you don't know what to wear back with. And it's just languishing in your closet, right? And so the problem that we want to solve for you is um, we want to give you ideas on how to wear things, but this isn't like built an outfit time. This is really about unpacking why you bought the stuff that you did and how you can really just think about it for the future and what you probably should be uh, getting rid of and what you should probably be never buying again. Um, so before we jump into stuff, do you have anything to add to that? Or? Um, no, just really, we're gonna be helping you edit and we're gonna be helping you figure out how to solve these problems on your own in your closet, which I think is so important. And the key to that is, you see behind us, we have fundamentals. Yeah. And the thing about fundamentals, we are always talking about shopping and how when you shop, you show us pack of fundamentals. But when you make those, you know, have to have buys and you buy a piece that really sings to you but you haven't figured out how to pair that back, just pack your fundamentals when you're shopping or if you're online shopping, take a mental note of what your wolves are, which I think is so important. Yeah, so I'm gonna step back for a second and just give the lay of the land. So we talk about organizing your closet in terms of woofs, in and outs, and had to haves. So woofs, if you were if you had a house, the woofs would be your floors, your walls, and your ceiling. They are those fundamental pieces that grease everything you do. When you put them on, you feel like yourself. Um, you know, they, they are our lifeblood when you are uh, when you love style, when you want to be able to always show your style. Then your in and outs are, if you were a house again, an in and out would be like a couch. You keep it around for years, maybe even a decade or whatever, but it's not a permanent fixture. It's not your walls, and you know, change out your walls and your floor. Um, but you do change out your furniture after you've gotten some good usage of it. So that's an in and out. You don't regret the purchase, and you probably want it too much to be able to resell it on the real real. And then a had to have is like that weird like macrame cat or jade elephant or whatever it is, that thing that like you fell in love with and um, you're not really totally sure why. It's kind of emotional. It's a conversation piece. It's a conversation, yeah, it's a conversation mm -hmm. piece. Um, and if someone saw it, they wouldn't be like, Dion, I expected to see this macrame cat in your house. But it's, it's your personal thing, right? So if you think of it in terms of a pyramid, the fundamentals, are the woofs, they are your base, your in and outs are next, and then the had to have. So a pyramid goes like that, right? So the top of the pyramid is really small. And what I know from you guys sending me comments about what you're needing help wearing is that your pyramid right now is super inverted, right? It looks like a spinning top. And you've got all these had to haves at the top here that are just weighing everything down. And a lot of you guys are super, super confused. Um, so before we start diving into really specific examples, I wanna reiterate something that I brought up in my stories this week to think about. And that is that uh, there's usually an underlying reason why you fell in love with something, why you bought it. And a lot of you guys are influenced by icons of the past and everything. And I gave you examples of like Talitha Getty and her gorgeousness in Morocco. And I said that, you know, what people loved about Talitha Getty at the time was, I mean, she was definitely a rule breaker and she dressed very differently than everyone around her. And today I wrote a story, I was like, if Talitha Getty were around today, I really don't think she'd be like banging it out at Coachella and wrapping flowers around her head because she's not going to follow the path that everyone does. She looks for something different or she looked for something different. So when you go back and if you try and mirror Audrey Hepburn, Talitha Getty, uh, Francois Hardy exactly, what you're mirroring is their physical outfit at that time. 
you're not mirroring the feeling that you're wanting to get, which is modernity and effortlessness and uniqueness. So what we want to do is help you figure out for the things that you've bought, how do you get all those, um, how do you squeeze all those things out of it? So what we've done is I've brought in pieces from my closet, from Tibby's past and from Dion's closet that kind of are representative of the stuff that you guys sent to us. Um, so since we were just talking about Talitha, why don't we tackle this, this little friendly guy here? Yes. Right. So this, and this is, uh, this is old Tibby. I'm just gonna lay it out there right away. And here we have the old Tibby logo. So a lot of you guys sent me very bohemian pieces like this. And if you remember as a creative pragmatist, our core tenets are chill, classic, modern, right? We balance between pragmatism and creativity. So when you find yourself tilting towards this like super bohemian and it's bright colors and it's printed and it's low cut and it's short, it just went every single, it just went out of your wheelhouse completely. So for any of you guys that sent me tops that are in this genre, we could just, you could just release those. They can release. just go. I think at this point, it's like, I can't imagine a way to make that look clean or modern. There's no way that I would, there's, there's no, no total net ratio. And there's no, there's nothing yeah. that you could do to this other than make it into like 40 scrunchies. Exactly, because even if you like tried to do a dress over pants situation and tried to do a wide leg pant, no. you would look like some cursed red carpet look from like 1998. Right. You just need to release. But and this one then. You could definitely salvage this. Just yeah. because it is a moment, it's still like, we love smocking, yeah. we like a high neck. Um, it's not like, it's not belted or anything. So, excuse me. I'm it's got the familiar, it. like, <laughs> It's got the, re it's relaxed, right? It's got the smock, it's got the raglan arm. It's, it's super chill, it's light and it's floaty. So this is where you've got to be able to distinguish between the difference between these two. So even though that this one is like, it's bohemian and it's pretty, mm -hmm. it still follows the codes of a creative pragmatist. Yeah. And it's certainly like, it's not something that I would wear every day, but it's a keeper. And that one, this was actually from Tracy's first collection with us. Mm -hmm. So this was spring 2006. I did this uh, pre-Tracy just to let her off the hook. But also on it's one. like, that cut is so out of left field compared to this. This still is in the same wheelhouse as a CP. Right. And knowing that difference, knowing the difference is very important when you are doing that. Um, I think the same could, be, same could be said for Bohemian styles as far as like, if you're trying to do more of a craftier moment yeah. as well, because you know, in upcoming collections, we have a little bit more deconstructed pieces, and it balances itself out with the clean and modern. Yeah. Like I like a brand like Bodhi. Yeah. If I wanted to get like an interesting statement top or jacket from them, I'm going to pair it back to my woofs right. to make it make sense for me. And I think that's the part that we want you to really grasp. It's like we want you to like things. We want you to have those emotional experiences when you are shopping but you know, with a dose of reality, you know? So when you guys are looking at the overly printed, overly bohemian items in your closet, when it has the tenants that you still kind of live by, then it's a keeper and you can work with it. And when you ask what to go with it, like Dion said, you're gonna be mixing fundamentals with it, the blazers, the cashmere sweaters, the jeans, etc. When you have these things that do not fall like that are breaking every tenant that you know that you kind of live by you've got to let them go okay so go keep do you want to talk about this one yeah actually so this is where um have to have some previous seasons um it's really important to kind of think about how you're going to make this work for you season to season and obviously the answer is fundamentals um, a lot of people um, remember this one from our fall 18 runway. It mm -hmm. was paired back to beautiful tall boots. I think it was like the original Logan boots and then an oversized cashmere sweater. Yeah, we had it with a big gray kind of Yeah, sweater, so we did it totally and really yeah. chic. And 
you know, we wanted people to be able to say, oh, okay, that's a classic piece from Tibby, so I can pair that with other classic pieces. Yeah. But I did love this blue here if you wanted yeah. to make this more transitional. People are starting to dress again. It's very promising in New York. I've seen some great outfits recently. So wearing this and pairing it back to a little black sandal for like a traditional look. I even Ooh, think too, like yeah, the red pretty. is really chic. And the the red for Tibby is like a neutral. It like is. We really do treat. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. red shoe, red bag is a neutral. Yeah. Red top, different. <laughs> so I think that, you know, even though this is something loud, right? It's silver. It is... I mean, it's not a mini skirt. It's not hot shorts. Like it's a really, um, it's it's very classic and it's very modern at the same time. And elegant. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not something that's out of left field. Like if you showed up wearing this and everything else you're wearing is a wolf, yeah, you're appropriate. You know, because yeah. I think you know this is something where, you know, I remember back back in the holiday season we we're talking about like, oh, how do you do holiday for the office when right. you don't look like you're wearing like a tacky sweater? It's like you do your whoops, you do a khaki yeah. sweater, you do a top like this, and then for But even with that too, like what's great with a skirt like that in your closet is that's a that's skirt was a twelve mower for sure because you're definitely wearing a chocolate brown boot with it and a big gray sweater, but yes. then that is so chic. Yeah, because if you did this with even a red sandal, it would be very and happy even with just that. like exactly white, and so you've got all the different textures going on here, which is like this is a good thing. Yeah, and you can just you can make it elegant, you can make it sporty, and even if you did one of the sculpted sweatshirts too, that would look really nice here as well. Yeah, so it's absolutely falling to the, like, the core tenets, right? Like this is when it makes sense. And this is, because sometimes some of you guys write and you're like, oh, I'm so surprised you did bright silver or that you did, you know, little fishies or whatever. And mm -hmm. it's like, no. We, we love that. It's, we love like, it makes surprises. sense because it's in our silhouettes. Yeah. Like we love a camp shirt. We love a bustier. We love a full skirt. These are all things that we always make. So it's never out of left field. Say we did like a printed kind of frilly top in a fish print. That would be a little weird. But everything yes. is still very clean and modern. Yes, That's printed frilly really fish. Yeah, would be weird. Or a short shift dress. <laughs> Exactly. Um, all right, so you guys have sent me a lot of lace pieces, okay? So this is uh, an old Marnie top that I have. And I don't wear a ton of white lace, but when I do, I'm glad I have this one in my closet. And so it really is, um, like when I bought this, I was really, really, really drawn to it. And you, like I said, if your hat to haves and your in and outs are getting in that more narrow part of the pyramid, you guys really just limit how much you're buying of this stuff. A little of it goes a really long way. But what's great about this pant is, I mean, if I'm on vacation, I could easily do like the full on head to toe white look. I would wear this with the black Stella pants. I would wear it with the raw denim that you're wearing. Um, this goes back with all of my uh, my whoops. But what, there are very few marriages that can ever take place between two had to have. So this is a totally different girl. And this is where, you know, for me, like as a designer and Dion who, like God bless her for years, would go out and work with all the department stores like we go into a department store and they'd be like, look, look at this fabulous outfit that I put together and we're gonna do like a blue boot with it. And I'm like, no one said those two could go together, even yeah. though they might've been in the same line. So it really is about that balance on the body because when we talk about chill, modern and classic, this is no longer chill, modern and classic at all. You know, this paired with Dion's shirt here, that. She's balanced. This with my jeans, I'm balanced. And then this, even though they might be in your closet, does not mean that they get to have a union together. Yeah, it's, that's like that's like a scary mannequin in the store that I would ask them to change. You know, like you would be so upset. Yeah, it's um, it's why the difference between those is so important because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there on what is considered a classic, and I feel like a lot of um, a lot of people would say like, oh, that lace top is classic. It's not. 
there's a lot going on. It's a bi material. Sure, it's got a high neck, and it's just like you know, it's not like a crazy avant-garde shape, but it's still not classic because yeah. it's got all of those bells and whistles. Now, um, one of you guys specifically sent me a pair of like brown, high-waisted paisley-esque pants, and you really like you were really really in love with them, and so kind of in the spirit of that. I remember when I bought this skirt from Chloe, and it was actually full length. I chopped it off because I just was like struggling with what to to do with it. And I wore it once with the black tank top. Like I thought that would make me feel like super chic in it, but I never, I think a brown and in a classic print yeah. and in a classic fabrication, like a silk, like, it's just classic, classic, classic. Yeah. You know, and, and so the things to look out for, you know, when we talk about chill, modern, and classic, it's not necessarily about something, like I said, on your body being, you know, one thing classic, one thing modern, one thing chill. Sometimes, like, it's really your ultimate holy grail items embody all three of those elements. And so when you've got classic brown, classic paisley, classic waistband, like, it's a very tailored waistband here. There's no interesting structure or shape to it um it's just classic and so like i don't know i wore it in capri but mm -hmm. i remember i was sad also yeah. i was in capri and everyone was walking around me in these beautiful like light sunshiny outfits and i'm in brown paisley yeah okay. it's you know even if you wanted to add a pop color there it would still be sad yeah you know, because I, you know, because I want to do a look at this because I feel like you're it's like okay. So if I were gonna do this, since it is very classic, I feel like a fundamental isn't the answer. Like that's, you know. Yeah, I'm sad. I'm falling asleep just holding these tops up, you know, yeah. with this. And yeah. I think you need something. Like if you think about this as being a classic piece, that's where you probably need to have, you know, add some chunk or something. Like there's some but structure. But see, I think because even this is like it can get into chaos land. Yeah, if I it's think you confused. And it's just, it's almost like normally when we talk about like tops that we feel like are Frankenstein. Like it's a Frankenstein outfit. I don't know where she's going. No, and I'm gonna be like total transparency Still, here. I gave this to the real real and they like run me back and they're like, bitch, you shortened it by like six inches. Like, you can't just give us this. Yeah. So um, anyways, Chloe skirt for sale. But so the bottom line is if you're gonna go with a brown, I really just would not do a super classic print. And I think uh, the woman, uh, the person who sent this to me, I'm pretty sure it was kind of like a tapestry. And yeah, I mean, listen, uh, good luck. You know, and I, it makes me think about when we did, had a couple of seasons ago when we made a twall print, and we did it, we I did it in that purple because if it had just been in like a classic red, I mean, we would have just looked yeah. like curtains in someone's country house or something, you know. And that that twall was really hard. Like it was very like. But it still specific. made sense in the purple yeah. because it didn't look too heritage classic and head to toe. Like, and I guess with the twall print, the key was a. Uh, is it was this was the spot that it was in. Yeah. Like we didn't uh, well, we didn't make it something that it would, like yeah. that we would never wear, you know? Although we did do it Hannah did it in that one amazing oh yeah short dress. Okay. Anyway, I did like that short dress. Those would be different. Yeah, that was good. Um, okay, so how do you wear like a crazy sixties print? So this is one we did in our um, sporty nylon actually a few years ago which I'm super falling back in love with this. This was it's a great. good one. Um, so we love this kind of print and I think it makes sense for, you know, when you're a creative pragmatist, you tend to lean towards prints that are, um, you know, if, if classic and clean is in your DNA, right, then prints that have um, a little more clean line work to them, they're not too murky, they're not muddy. Um, I grew up with a father who's an artist, so we always had to go to art shows and there were always like those artists who were doing all the, you know, silk watercolors and on silk fabrics. And there's something like, it's pretty, but it's not. It's too it pretty. I think it's it needs too a little bit of graphicness yeah. to it as well. And also I feel like 
if we do make a tiny print, which is very rare, it always has weird colors. Yeah. Because otherwise, like a tiny print just, you know, so it, it doesn't work as much. Yeah, so if you've got these bolder prints, that's where, you know, really, guys, the bigs and pigs, right? Because when you've got a print, it needs to be on something icky and strange or something glossy or something with sculpture and maybe even all three. So that's kind of what to um, the lens to run it through there. And um, and if not, I mean, if this were on cotton poplin, I would wear it with like maybe a, something gross and yeah. sticky, but I probably wouldn't wear it as much. In the nylon, I can get a lot of wear out. It makes of it. the most sense. I feel like you'd feel more like yourself because then you could just wear an oversized black or gray sweatshirt and then your gold sandals and yeah. you've got like a chic just throw on look. Yeah, because someone wrote to me and they said, well, they said part of my problem is the first thing I always go for is the print, then I go for the color, and then I go for the fabrication. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, that's fine, but the thing is, is you have to have all three. Yes. Like, you, you should be a little more careful about your purchase. That's fine that you've listed out the order of attraction but you do need to have all three elements to make it a keeper. Okay. It's like otherwise you won't feel like yourself. Right. Oh yes. Okay, so this is one of my vintage sweaters. It's a big Kramer from Seinfeld sweater. It's um, you know, just a yellow Lacoste. I love yellow, um, and I like to kind of mix a lot of um, you know, preppier things in a more ironic way because like when I wear something super preppy, I can't go full on. I have to add modern elements. But I've struggled with this one because it's preppy and it's yellow. And I feel like in a color, if this was like a bright green or like a navy or something, I feel like I'd have an easier time with it. But what I noticed was that when I paired it back to some newer, you know, earth tones, like the um, ones from Summer Capsule, it started to Oh, with like an olive green? Yes, because like, I will say though, I don't hate it with like a nineties jean. I don't hate it with a nineties jean. I just hate it with a dark denim because it's like a weird Super mix. Super and you would yeah. never wear it with white. Yes. Never. No. I did try it with my white, my weird white lizard shorts from last year, the lizard and oh, boss yeah, that ones. Count. That was because it was icky and white. It's icky and but a white and jean is yeah. like a never. And even yeah. like a white linen pant, like I would just look like I'm cosplaying as like, like I live in, I don't know. I'm like cosplaying as Kramer or something or just being like on a golf course. Okay, but, but this is this is good. And then again, like red, red sandal, shoe, yes. Like saves a day. So that's like a ton. Yeah. In a really good way. And then also that gray stripe actually added something interesting too. If I wanted to wear something dark underneath. Because a lot of people are would like Would you do like a black top? I would do black. And that's the thing. I usually hate black and yellow, but when you add gray to it or brown, it actually makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. And then I'd probably do my nude Nema pumps from like yeah, two resorts ago. Yeah, I was gonna say ago. like, yeah, a, a good like brown sandal feels mm -hmm. right here. Like you don't want the black and I don't want the red. Because yellow is hard, especially like this kind of yellow too. Because yeah. it can look very precious. So you really have to like give it something modern, something utilitarian. So the category that that really falls into is that is like the bright sweater that you don't know what to do with, right? And so wearing those bright sweaters, um, really take them and mix them with a strange earth tone that you would have never thought to put it with. So like that olive green pant, you know, especially for people who want to get out of like a black rut, those weird olive greens are like perfect. So then if you've got bright green, if you have bright, you know, bright blue, orange. turquoise, orange, yellow, like all those colors get really like taken down a notch with that with that color green, and that's one of the things that Dion and I observed with um, everything that was sent to us was there weren't any requests to really hype something up. It was like the things that you guys sent us, in order to really make them wearable, they all needed to be brought down a notch. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So like that bright blue colorway, like take it down with, with uh, you know, definitely with a weird green. And I don't have an example here to use, but uh, someone else had sent me 
the elder statesman cashmere sweater and it was the all rainbow um, one and I love that sweater and you were confused on how to wear it and uh, I mean I'll take it off your hands if you don't use it but like that kind of sweater what was perfect about the elder statesman sweater is you know, if it had been a plunge neck with like a big sleeve, mm -hmm. I would be like, honey, real, real. But it was a big oversized high neck, like that sweater, you're gonna pull it out a good number of times a year. Like when you just need to feel like you're wearing something interesting, you can pull that sweater out. You could wear it with like a skirt like this that gives it like that good juxtaposition. Um, and then you can wear it with a flat slide. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, I would wear it even with, uh, I would wear it with a dark denim. I wouldn't wear also, it with a light yeah. denim, but I would wear it with a dark denim. Because I actually tried on that striped Christopher John Rogers yeah. top with the dark denim, and it like felt so much like me, because I don't wear a lot of color, but like I've been really I can see that, that yeah. right? And the dark denim felt really, really chic. Oh, perfect, yeah. Yes. So with brights, the dark denim is making a lot more sense with the brights because we took a moment away from color for a minute and did no color colors, but there's a lot of bright saturations coming down the pipe and that dark denim saves it every single time. It does, so yeah. it's a dark denim or you can see if you're gonna be, I'm sorry, we're just making the older statesman sweater here. Yeah. Okay. One more second. All the colors, yeah, we need some red. Okay, great. Right, so here, there's our little pretend, right? So look, like if you're wearing this with, that becomes so chic. It's not, and let yeah, me tell you exactly. what's not chic with it is, um, you know, like, pretend like this is white denim because I actually don't hate the, I don't hate the We actually do yeah, have white me, denim, but I agree 100%. Like if I were wearing white denim or even if I were wearing like a black trouser that didn't have a texture to it, it feels off. Like honestly, if I were doing just like a regular black Stella, you need texture. Like need this texture. looks sad. Like that this is was like corporate woman, like no. Yeah. This is like, Judy, stop that. Oh, Judy's my mom. I don't want to <laughs> Judy's a Judy would never. She <laughs> would never. But if you wore the white denim with it, like you're way too literally, like yeah. you're out of 80s Tiger Bee. Yeah, you're an 80s villain, actually. Like, you're gonna go bully someone at, like, the golf course. Like, that's what, I mean. But I would wear the nylon. Yeah, the nylon is chic, because if you did the nylon and then you did, like, the Byron sandals and, like, the yeah. silver or the gold could be really interesting with the sock. I so like the that. rules of bigs and pigs, like, they can also apply to how you're wearing bright colors with each other. Mm -hmm. So all of these bright colors, when you put them back with a weird texture, super, super interesting. You can see how the Elder Statesman like rainbow sweater is going to look amazing with all of your great um, fundamentals, your woofs. Oh, actually, I do want to talk about pink for a second because I think that this is such a, a thing. Um, I remember, yes, we have a lot of pink. Pink is tough. Pink, things pink is tough. Up. And you know what it is? I feel like we had a moment on Instagram where literally everything was tonal pink and like Pepto-Bismol colored and everyone dove into it and did it very tonally or even tried it with pink and red, we love that too. But you know what, I actually don't mind it here with the dark denim because it makes it less sweet. But but if you do it with the dark denim, I don't like it with those shoes. Oh no, not at all. Because like, now you're just too sweet. I, I, but I would do the gold. I would do gold, I'd do red. Um, yeah. I wouldn't do black because then it all of a sudden feels really sad. No, we don't, I don't you like have to do, black. it has to pop with the pink. Yeah. Pink needs a pop. So if it's more pink, red, yeah. or if you do a brown, or this color or the weird, here. like the because green that saves the day. Because if you did this with like the gold sandals or like the, um, it kind of becomes like a nice little, you know, early 2000s Carrie Bradshaw moment. If you did like the gold Frasier heel that's coming out, yeah, I'm not bad. Oh no, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. At all. So um, the know. army green pants, those are coming back um, soon when they get made, um, but I just wanted to let you know that. So we, uh, I'm sorry, we sold out quickly and right because again, like it's the neutral color that, that you need. Um, so just to let you know that. All right, now, 
Can I send me some Lily Pulitzer stuff? What? Okay, so, and now, so who's all like heart in that? Okay, so listen, uh, I love the irony of like a Lily print, right? Like it's fun, it's ironic. Where it's not fun and ironic is when it's literally on a Lily ship dress, right? Yeah. So to me, um, you know, when you guys ask about modernity and everything, I love it. This was an old, this was from Tracy Fife, and this was, oh my God, like maybe 2001, 2002. So this is when he had his little store down in Nolita. Um, but like, it's Lily, but it's no Lily. This was like this weird skin tight, super, he used to have this French woman that worked there, and mm -hmm. oh my God. She could have been wearing like a Q-tip, and I would have bought it from her. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, when there is irony, then these kind of prints become really, really interesting. They do, and I mean, listen, no one does Lily better than Prada, um, and it's because there's good irony there. Yeah, like that would have like a longer collar, or would have some interesting detail. Yeah, and she'd do it in like some gross ass fabric. Yeah, it would always be icky. Yeah, always. Yeah, so, um, but, you know, Lily, straight up, like, that's classic, classic, classic. It's the three C's. We don't do three, we don't do three C's. We don't do two C's. So we don't do all those classics all together. Um, so, you guys, listen, I really wanted to bucket these things for you to help you out. But that, um, that seemed to really cover the range of what you sent in. Um, a lot of you guys though you did as the way that you expressed your problems with the items that you sent to us really meant like and my dad was a therapist also you know like a lot of times people solve their own problems on the couch and I think what you wrote to me uh, indicates to me that you know the answer and it's hard sometimes to let go of some of this stuff um, but I think you do uh, know the answer. Exactly. I mean, you've been watching this for a year and you've been problem solving. You always send us out the photos. I think it's more of, you know, the answer to the question is I probably need to let that piece go, yeah. usually. Um, but I hope that after this session, like, you know, you guys are, you know, have a little bit more tools you need to keep editing. I mean, because really, and the, the key takeaway here, you guys, really, if, if the shape if the body, if the intent of it matches your chill modern classic vibe, then it is a keeper. And if it doesn't, then it is not a keeper. So a lot of you guys, uh, I actually had multiple people write to me about acne shrunken motorcycle jackets. Oh yeah. And you know, I I wrote back and I'm like, God damn it, I have a navy blue one in my closet. I spent a fortune on it. And I never wore it once. And the reason why I didn't wear it once is um, it was shrunken, which is a push for me. I don't yeah. do many shrunken items. But it was also a motorcycle. Like, it was a very straight up motorcycle. Like, they didn't really mess with the, the intent of it. It was a pure motorcycle jacket, and it was shrunken. So something that straight up classic, and that straight up out of something that I typically wore, I, ne I never ended up wearing it. It didn't have any of the ease that I wanted, and it didn't have the modernity that I wanted. Had I bought the big oversized yeah, one, like I would have worn one. the hell out of that. If I had that big one, like... I did, and I wore it to death, and then I yeah. released it to the real real, because I just, after a while, well, I just everyone knocked it off. Yeah, I just, and I just wanted a leather long trench, like a vintage one. Yeah. And so I just got that instead. Yeah. Because like, but shorter for me, it just, it's the same when we talk about a shrunken blazer. Like it needs to either be very intentionally cropped and like big, because we did a cropped moto jacket that was really oversized in like spring 17. And it felt right because everything was paper bag. So it just created nice balance proportions. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, it's like usually those one-offs. But every time I go to reach for a denim, like a crop denim jacket, I just feel like, you know, I'm a kid living in the East Village again or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, well, and someone also wrote about like the Gammy style collars, and we, you know, we really loved collars too this yeah. season. 
And for us, um, I think that the idea with those collars is that it's kind of like the new necklace, right? So if I'm wearing like the sculpted sleeve blazer that we have, that collar is just an interesting way to have a pop of color. Maybe you can put on the blazer, Dion. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. grab, yeah, if you wanna grab a collar. the collar for you because I, I'm sure a lot of you guys have bought the collars this season and it really is just an interesting way to modernize. It is, and uh, that's a good way to really revive old blazers. I have like a closet full of vintage blazers and the collars made me not as tired of them while I was trying to sort out what else I wanted in my wardrobe. You can just ignore the fact that this top has an attachable collar and I'm just gonna button this up so that we can see it. Because I do think it's important, like if you are doing these styles, like, you know, figuring out which one you think is gonna be the most wearable. Like for me, having a white one doesn't make as much sense as like a blue striped shirting. Um, just because I think the blue shirting adds some dynamism to it because I do wear a lot of solids. Well, and I think the blue shirting falls into your DNA. Yes. So I think that if that one was, um, you know, all different colored polka dots and lace cutout, yeah. you wouldn't have worn it. I'll you be just, honest, I was in love with the Mew Mew. Oh, I love that one too, but one if I wore that to the gorgeous. office, you'd ask if I like had a head injury or right. something. You know? Yeah, I mean, it would have had to have been the Mew Mew one. Yeah. But I think what's good is, you know, there are things like, this collar is a really good example of an in and out. So like you're wearing it, you, you don't want to bust the bank on it. Um, you really shouldn't bust the bank on it. And it's something that you know that you're going to wear for a while. And um, it probably doesn't take up too much real estate in your closet. Exactly. You can keep it around. But it made this something different. And so I think when you have your woofs, the whole idea about woofs is that when you try an in and out, when you try something that is very of the moment, the woof is what makes it feel very um, familiar to you. And I think, I mean, you are wearing it with the more extreme jacket, but like if you were wearing this with a big tweed jacket, right? Yeah. So that's another big trend right now. If you were wearing it with a big oversized tweed jacket and that, and you were just like, total trend on trend, chaos. then you're like trendy Trixie and <laughs> trendy Trixie. You know, like Yeah, it's chaos. Like mm -hmm. and you know, it's all about grounding elements. That's why the wolves are so important. Yeah, so the irony is is that it's those really good basics that aren't basics in your closet that allow you to experiment. They allow you to really push and allow you to not feel so basic. So the next thing that we've been getting a lot of questions on that we're gonna each do is you guys have been asking us, like, if you, what would be your, like, woof starter pack? Like, what would be the five fundamentals that you would buy? So, Dion, I'm let you go first. I'll start, obviously, with this, because, you know, I did a million videos of this last summer when we had it for spring 20 in this and that brown color. This is the oversized classic menswear button-down shirt. And the reason why is because it's, you know, the shirt that just keeps on giving. You can crisscross tuck it, you can have it oversized, you can even wear it as a shirt jacket in the summer over your things if you don't want to have your arms showing. There's a lot of options here. Like I have this and it comes out like usually once a week or once every two weeks because there's I wear it so many different ways and it never looks like the same shirt. And it being longer in the back even adds to the cost per wear because I've even worn this as a bathing suit cover up too. So it's just really one of those things that if you don't pack this shirt, you usually regret it if you have this in your closet. And so what I do want to bring up here is um, I want to give you guys options too. So this is obviously Tibby, but for my 20-something self, um, when I would like cringe if I went out to dinner and we had to split the check and someone like, mm -hmm. you know, had a drink at the table other than water, like I was, you know, saving every dime. So another option here is you know, go and shop the menswear area and really get get comfortable cutting things up, playing around with styles, working them in your closet. But if you shop the menswear, if you shop a few sizes larger than what you would normally wear, you know, get something really inexpensive from vintage and yeah. um, take it home and play with it. And so that's where you can start off, but then this is like the great option later on when you get a little more um, bank in your account. See, that's the thing. I got that one, and I feel like 
I, when I wanted to experiment with prints, that's when I went for the men's vintage. Because yeah. like, I was like, oh, this is risk-free. This is like $12 at a vintage store. I can just th throw this on and see if I like the print, which is great. And that for me, like when I worked at, so when I worked at American Express, that's when I got my first like real paycheck. Mm -hmm. And that was my first purchase. I went to Barney's and I bought like a shirt, a shirt that was like the, the classic <laughs> shirt. Shirt collar, not, beautiful. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah classic classic because it was a Barney's yeah. you know that's when Barney's used to be like that's what they were known for like mm -hmm. basic but not basic yeah um, so yeah so that's a really good first investment of course and then obviously you know the oh. Liam and people ask me all the time like what's the first blazer I should get the answer is all for me is always going to be a Liam because I believe in wolves that solve problems this is actually the Liam that's a tuxedo Liam that's coming out with our winter capsule. Got a lot of fun, interesting bells and whistles on it, which we'll discuss so at a later date. It's amazing. Okay. But the Liam blazer, the reason why it works is because, again, it's like the shirt. If you pack it, you aren't lacking much when you pack this to travel. It's something that solves a problem. Like if I'm wearing, say I just bought these sculpted denim. I already know that I can do a t-shirt in my Liam and that works. Mm -hmm. If I try something new, like a more of a bodycon knit dress, or even one of these like longer maxi dresses from uh, spring summer, this on my shoulders makes it work again. Always. If I wanted to try like to re um, reinvigorate something in my wardrobe, like those sequin shorts that I have from right. a previous season, if I did a white shoulder pad tee yeah. and the Liam, it makes sense for me again. So everything makes sense with this, with the Liam. And that means in black, brown, or navy. We're gonna have brown coming in the tropical wool as a recut very, very soon. So obviously put yourself in the coming soon when that's available online. If you're on, you know, signed up to our newsletter, you'll be able to do that. Um, but it's just the perfect starter blazer because I feel like at this point, most of the people that um, I encounter in our DMs or yeah. just TV fans that don't have the Liam feel the deficit in their wardrobe. Yeah. Because once you see it on many times, you realize the endless functionality of it. But I do think the cutout blazer. The cutout is also great like, too. For me is, is great because, and I don't think the gray is a yeah. starter. I the, think black the, is the black a starter. is a starter. Or if you have the navy from a previous season yeah. too, that's yeah. a good starter. But this, just to show the shape, this one's also great because it's not too oversized, but it still has that nice chill moment to where it still feels relaxed. Not like you're wearing, you know, like, you're not shopping at a little boy's uniform store with some shrunken blazer. Well, it always feels so clean. Oh, and yeah, when you were talking about like solving problems, again, like the problems that you have is like, I'm wearing denim and I want to feel more put together. Like all there of a you sudden, yeah. you're put together. You and know? not looking too corporate. And that's also right. a really important thing too. And, and this is where, you know, proportions really do matter when you're buying your basic items. So what you see here is like a little bit longer length and a little bit of a cutout. And that's why you guys know like there's a D to C brand that like rain, it rhymes with like Schmeber Schmain. And <laughs> I don't want to call a so. brand out, but like, <laughs> please, I mean, they kill me. And they always, you know, they'll write in their copy like the oversized blazer. But when the blazer is like it's hitting short. right here and it's like all darted and like it's not oversized, it's not cool. No. It's not. So look for the the proportions here. And you know, we love you guys if you um, want to know how this stuff looks on a more petite size, please look at personal stylist underscore Tibby, that is Silver's Instagram or Hannah's Instagram. Silver wears the clothes in her size. Hannah wears the clothes in my size when she's actually silver size. And so you can see like the difference if you just go like super, super big or, uh, you know, just regular, whatever, but it's good. Also, obviously the Stella pant is something that I think everyone needs. Because honestly, even that, you know, when we're talking about the cropped jacket style, not necessarily a moto jacket, but I remember there was one season where we did do like more of like an aviator style crop jacket and pa paired back to this with the sneaker, it just made sense for it's us. Good. And it's because you've added this nice chill moment that's very elegant and polished rather than doing like a skinny jean, a booty and like a moto jacket. Yeah. You're better than that. 
<laughs> so be better than that. And that's when we talk about proportions. You know, a lot of you guys write to me and you're like, oh, I'm so glad you're talking about proportions because I'm long-waisted and I want my waist to like show off. That's not what we mean by proportions. You guys, you, you know, really look at my Instagram today when I'm talking about impressionism and everything. Proportions is about just this overall kind of interesting play on shapes. Um, I don't care. I don't care about the waist. I don't. I don't care if you, you know, if something makes your arms look really slim. I just that is not interesting to me at yeah. all. It's about like the total uh, message that you're communicating. And you know, I really encourage you when you buy these things, um, buy the buy your size. Don't buy up thinking that oversized. That you get oversized by buying larger. Um, don't do that. We already engineer these things to fit perfectly and relax yeah. and effortless and oversized. We cut them to hang that way off the body. So if you want it to look like it does on us or even on the model in Ecom, that means by your size. If you wear a size four, get a four. Yeah. If you wear a size twenty six, get a twenty six. You know. Um, also, this is you know my favorite wardrobe staple yeah. because it. Again, is solving a problem. If you're in a pickle, you have a last minute event with earrings, the right shoe and the right bag, it works there. But it also works with flat sandals on vacation. Yeah. And it's also a skirt too, because if you throw an oversized cashmere sweater over this in boots, it, it's just a lot of cost per wear. I have this in white and in black in my closet, and it really solves a lot of problems for me. And in the heavy silk, it's a 12 month. Yeah, and it also has an adjustable strap too, which is just very easy and it just works for everyone so you can just skip the tailor trip and then also you can even layer under the turtlenecks t-shirts and you know make it as forward as you want to or as classic as you want and then lastly I like the pull-on joggers because my Stella pants I have so many different iterations of them the nylon cargo wide leg is just like a nice icing on top of the cake for my wardrobe but this is a newer shape for me and just having something that I can slip on and it works with my really oversized pieces and it's nice and balanced and it also works with a variety of footwear mm -hmm. options. Because if you've seen some of our previous lives, we've done flats, um, closed and open toe and we've even done boots inside of these and you can actually tuck these into boots as well. So that's giving you, you know, a myriad of ways to wear that all feel very approachable. And they can come, there. They're on your natural waist. So that's also even better because if you're doing something crop, it still works. And then these are the cotton ones. And just, I wanna point out for you guys, if you buy like the cotton ones or the nylon ones, they are, these are really nice and light. Like it's a very breathable cotton. But if you see here, every pocket has been strategically placed to kind of hide underwear lines okay yes. so you know it's a real like sometimes when things are a little bit sheer on cotton I promise you you do not want it fully lined like no. nothing reeks more of like the ladies section than like, yeah line white cotton or especially like if they do the lining that cuts off yeah the, the opposite it's not from cool. chill on vacation no, and it's we not want cool. We want something that's gonna work PDW, yeah. so city and vacation. Yeah. And also, I just have to mention the nylon, people just associate nylon with heat for some reason, and I don't yeah. know where this is yeah. coming from. I've worn these in like August in Alabama yeah. before. So Did grab, you know, whatever your nude is, grab that nude underwear and like, yeah. don't wear red. Yeah, right? just, you know, pick up a pair of commandos in the right tone, they have a, like a variety of them. It's just really easy. But yeah, a lot of people ask me about the transparency as well, but it's good to good. Same with it's actually good. same with the cargo and the same vintage cotton and also the leisure suit pant. Yeah. Because people have asked about that. It's completely And all of those can go in the washer and dryer. I've been like the queen of wash I know. I even did the railroad She's denim Liam for some mad scientist of that washer dryer. Mm -hmm. Trying it all out. Um, so my new favorites in the woofs, the fundamentals, are the like you're wearing the Raw oh, yeah. denim. I mean, these are really good. So this is we had sold out of the lighter denim in this body. We're bringing that back, and we've got the raw denim, and then we've got it in black denim coming up. Uh, so I think I was doing a live yesterday, and I was talking about 
one of the most common mistakes that people make, which doesn't give them any variety in their closet, is you're like, oh, I look great in a skinny leg jean. And so then you walk in your closet and you've got eight pairs of skinny leg jeans. And I'm like, okay, well, you had one pair. And like, maybe you can have two in a different wash. Yeah. You don't need eight pairs of the same. No. So what you need to do is like, really think about your jeans in the different shapes. It comes down to proportions again, right? So you need this shape. You need one in this shape. Maybe you need a really interesting higher waisted one. We even have the denim coming up in the Stella jean. So make sure when you're buying denim, don't don't like fall in love with another denim that is exactly what you already have. Don't do that. Don't do it. Even if you think the wash is like a little bit different, it's not. It's it really like not. it's not. It's not going to change your life. But what will change your life is when you are going somewhere and you have a real need for a jean that is like a little more chill and a little more effortless, or maybe you have a jean that you're going to a work event or a cocktail party, and you know that you can put a heel on with this, and you are totally appropriate. Like I even think you could sneak into our like tightly wound country club, yeah. and they would like let you in and not realize you're wearing denim. Exactly. I'm gonna try that and see if those screechers. Try are it out. Yeah. And that's another thing. When you are building out a new wardrobe, or if you're changing anything about your look, or just updating, and you have a deficit in jeans, don't start out with jeans with ribs. That doesn't make sense. No. Because you can't wear them as nearly as many places as you can, like a darker medium wash with no ribs. So I always. That's one thing that I've noticed when I'm playing around in people's closets a lot is that they have gone for the ripped jean and then wonder why they don't have that cleanliness they want with nicer tops. And then once I get them into something dark and like a nice raw denim or even a medium wash that's a little bit more relaxed like ours or even like the gray ones, it just, it changes everything. And then all of a sudden it all the does. tops work. It does. And I think that, um, you know, I, at my age, I get different DMs questions sometimes. I went, Dion gets and I get a lot of you moms telling me that you feel like you're in a rut and then I see these pictures and you know some of the jeans like they look like they're on my like my son's girlfriend when he was in ninth grade like mm -hmm. they're all those like fitted like all shredded it's like that Hollister looking jean yes. and I'm like you're don't grown don't, you're grown don't do that <laughs> so remember like when you're kind of um reaching back to you want to be like the modern interesting mom don't be just go for one level up right like that's still denim it's it's cool and you will not look like every mom in the drop-off line like it's a good thing it's a really good thing and my other hey byron yeah. will you come here with your sweater self um so one of my other things that is my favorite is not Byron. <laughs> Byron is my favorite. Um, no, the cashmere sweater. So Byron is wearing our fundamentals, our wolf cashmere sweater. I wear the sweater. We all wear the sweater. Yeah. Even when we travel, we wear the sweater. my sweater. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the sister like your, traveling sweater. Yeah. Like, it's like you have a Yes. <laughs> that if there's a gray cashmere, everyone is like, worn it or bundled up in yes. it or you know yeah <laughs> so when we talk about cost per wear for a lot of you a new way to calculate cost per wear is how many times I've worn it and how many times Byron's worn it or in this case like Frank my husband wearing it or my boys wearing it so the clothing that can like get passed around yeah. in the family yeah it's great even better I remember like the first ordinary. cold day um, of after the pandemic it was like the first cold day I think you were wearing the gray, I was I was wearing the gray, Tracy was wearing the gray, and we all just kind of like walked in like, yeah, it's like gotcha. it's like that oh, meme of Spider-Man where they're all pointing at each other. That's like us, we were all wearing the same gray cashmere. But you know what's good is, like, Byron's wearing it, but I, like, I'll wear this with the big black full skirt or the nylons, and you're not wearing it with the full skirt. You'll wear it with well, the nylons. <laughs> So, but I mean, like, that's the great thing about um, the woofs, these fundamentals, is they are basic, and they're discreet, but they definitely make a statement. And so, um, 
that's the thing. Like it allows you to put your own personality on it, and then you look like you in it. And yeah. if, if I were wearing it, I don't think people would think that we look exactly alike. Yeah. Christine's also wearing it today, by the way. I just saw her walk by. Oh, really? <laughs> in the gray. Yeah, I think great. she ran away. I think she thought she was going to get called on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you guys. I hope that you found this helpful. Um, remember, build your house from the bottom up. Your closet, your woofs should be on the bottom and your had to haves at the top. And if you invert it into like, like this, then it turns into a spinning top and then it's crazy. And then you guys get all confused. And at some point, I mean, what can we do? Like, it's a hot mess. So um, take care. And um, I wanna let you know that in two weeks, we are gonna be doing all of this from Houston and from Austin and from Dallas and we will give you the details. So if you guys are in Texas, um, we would love to see you and it's gonna be so good. And I've been watching Thelma and Louise. Nice, on I movie. have two pairs of cowboy boots, can't yeah, wait. It's gonna be so good. Get a bedazzle, a Liam jacket. <laughs> but what's really great. cool too is we're actually gonna all be traveling with just a bag of whoops. Yes. And we're gonna do that because we wanna just see what we pick up along the way. And I think that's the beauty of traveling is being able to kind of jump into the moment that you're in but it's not like breaking the bag. Like I want to get like the perfect whatever, whatever. And, um, but we'll show you what we get along the way. So um, we'll see you then. And we'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next then. week. So, all right, <laughs> bye. bye.